America is not a racist country. Ladies and gentlemen, never let anybody tell you that racism was in the South. Racism is in every square inch of America. And redlining has never ended. So I'm going to tell you a story about something that occurred in my state here in the Northeast. Lakeland Bank in New Jersey admitted no wrongdoing, you know, because this is what these folks do when they get caught red-handed, all right? So redlining is racist. And Lakeland Bank recently agreed to pay $12 million to end lending inquiry. So they got caught doing redlining. And you see what year this is, right? You know, I, I was listening to a few videos. This was a couple of years back. Oh, well, you know, they did redlining. Well, they still do. Okay. If you see racism in the appraisal, then you can best believe redlining is still occurring. So a New Jersey-based bank accused by the Justice Department of redlining to avoid making loans in predominantly Black and Latino neighborhoods agreed on Wednesday to create a $12 million home ownership fund in one of the largest federal settlements of its kind. Okay, um, you know, anytime these folks try to tell you they no longer do something, they still do it. They just go underground with it, but it never truly goes away. Lakeland Bank admitted no wrongdoing as a part of consent decree brokered by the U.S. Department of Justice which had been investigating the bank's lending practices between 2015 and last year, which was 2021. But Lakeland has agreed to open two new branches, including one in Newark, and to increase mortgage lending in underserved communities of color. You know how they are in three northern new jersey counties the agreement with lakeland follows similar settlements negotiated in the past year by the justice department with lending institutions listen to where else they were redlining houston memphis and philadelphia But I had people come to me and tell me, oh, you know, they, they don't redline anymore. Redlining is alive and well. Okay. And is believed to be the third largest of its kind. Only a $25 million settlement with New Jersey-based Houston City Savings Bank. So now you're seeing all these other banks were still heavily practicing redlining. And this is recent. So any of you out there that are giving dates between redlining starting and when it ends, Please stop doing that. Redlining never went anywhere. So Hudson City Savings Bank between 2015 and an $18 million settlement with Trident Mortgage involving redlining in the Philadelphia area in July were larger. And that's this July, y'all. This July, 2022. 
We hope that this settlement sends a strong message regarding our commitment to ending redlining across the nation. Christian Clark, Assistant Attorney General, uh, Attorney General for Civil Rights, said in announcing the agreement. Mm, mm, mm. We're creating home ownership opportunities for borrowers, and especially those of color. Wow. She added, Lakeland, a community bank in the midst of a negotiated merger with a rival institution, Provident, operates 68 branches in central and northern New Jersey. And in New York's Hudson Valley, the Department of Justice had accused Lakeland of denying or discouraging loans in certain New Jersey neighborhoods. You know what they're talking about. They're talking about a black neighborhood based on race, color, or nationality origins of its residents. A discriminatory practice commonly known as redlining. All of its branches were in majority white neighborhoods, federal officials said, and its loan officers did not serve the credit needs of Black and Latino neighborhoods in and around Newark. Lakeland's policies, the Justice Department charged, reinforced and perpetuated segregated housing patterns. Mm-hmm. There were qualified, so there were um, Blacks and Latinos that actually qualified for loans, but they were still denied anyway. They did qualify. Similar banks generated five times as many loan applicants from prospective Black and Latino um, home buyers as Lakeland, Sellinger said. Redlining is racist, he said, pure and simple. Lakeland, in a statement, denied that the bank had acted improperly and said it had agreed to the settlement to avoid distraction. No, you didn't. You agreed to the settlement because you were guilty of what you were being accused of. Don't let these people tell you that they settled something and it was for some different reason. No, you settled it because it was true. What you were, you were being accused of redlining and that that was exactly what you did. That's why there's a settlement. Mm, mm, mm. The agreement allows us to focus our time, expertise, and resources towards achieving a shared goal of meeting the credit needs of all residents within our communities, including those who historically have been underserved. Thomas J. Sarah, Lakeland's president and chief executive. And y'all are responsible for the ghettos too. The, the creation of the ghetto came out of racism. So you see all of these people in these areas, they're responsible for that too, y'all. As part of the negotiated settlements, They're saying the communities that were affected will be eligible for up to $15,000 in benefits set aside to make it easier to purchase or maintain homes. The $12 million subsidy fund may be used to help buyers make down payments on homes, pay for closing costs or insurance, or shrink interest payments over the span of the loan. No more than 25% of the fund may be used for home refinance loans. 
And Lakeland has also agreed to spend roughly $1 million to develop community partnerships and to advertise the available subsidies. David D. Trout, a Rutgers law professor who in May released a report on housing sales in Newark, who owns Newark, said the settlement offered practical benefits while sending a powerful message. Yeah, but you know what, y'all? It's still always going to be banks out here doing this. You watch. It'll be more popping up being accused of the same thing. If you think this is it, as far as redlining, you better think again. Redlining has never stopped being practiced in America. Never. Accountability has been almost entirely missing in discussions of redlining, past and present. Professor Trout said, we've done a pretty good job of describing the problem, but have done very little to address them in concrete ways. $12 million is tens of thousands of mortgages, which means a lot in a region in which ownership costs have been going up dramatically, making home ownership out of reach for many. And that's true. That's very true. Lakeland and Provident Bank announced on Tuesday that they had agreed to a $1.3 billion merger to create a preemptive super community bank. A spokesman for Provident Bank said Wednesday the federal settlement, which a judge must approve before it can take effect, would not derail the merger. We are aware of the pending settlement and fully consider it when agreeing to the merger with Lakeland, he said in an email. Ms. Clark said that Lakeland would not be permitted to satisfy the terms of the settlement by simply adding provident branches to its portfolio and would be required to open an entirely new branch in Newark. So what they essentially did, they've been denying loans in Black and Latino areas, and they also had branches where white people live, you know. So, you know, this problem, you can best believe they're going to practice this until they just can't do it again, you know, do it anymore. And, and that's the way it is here in, you know, not only here, but in all states. The problem with redlining, it denies access to opportunity. Well, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. They don't want you to have the same opportunity. They have talked about equality for decades centuries in this country, but never did it because it's all about psychological warfare. We have to sound like we're concerned. We have to sound like we're going to do something, but actually don't do anything. And that's really the goal. You can't get a mortgage. The appraisals will be off. The insurance higher. Yes. And that's what they have done historically to us. And we still see them cheating in appraisals. But like I said, if you see them cheating in appraisals, you can best believe they're cheating you in the insurance. They're cheating you with um, the mortgage. They're cheating you in refinance. They're cheating you all the way around. It's just that the appraisal is more out there. But these other businesses and, and components that are part of buying a house, they're cheating you too. You can best believe Black people in this country are paying a lot more for home owner insurance 
than white people are paying. They're cheating you all the way around. So, you know, what can I say, y'all? All right. With less access to home equity, it becomes harder to borrow, to start a business, or send a child to college, a cycle that only widens the racial wealth gap, Mr. Richardson said. Redlining is overlooking and undervaluing people and places intentionally, he said. Yes, I definitely agree. Y'all, please tell me what you think about this story. And let me know if you heard of similar things in your state. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.